Welcome guys, it's Andy and Simon here from D6 Evolution. Hello. And it's time for another battle report. And it's a it's a, it's a grudge match, isn't it? It is, it is yeah, a bit of a since our last us. battle report against your Imperial Knights. Today's is going to be Harlequins. It is, they're back. Yeah, against my uh, Death Watch uh, custodies list. Um, so guys, if you're new to the channel, D6 Evolution is all about 40k tactics and it's aiming to make you guys better 40k players. And we are going to be focusing on the decisions that we make during this game. So remember to comment on our tactics, let us know if you do anything different. Um, and remember guys, if you like what you're seeing in the video, remember to subscribe to the channel. Now, let's take a look at the armies, eh? Let's do it. So Simon, tell me about your army, buddy. Okay, this is my Mask of the Shattered Path. Harlequins. Oh, it, they're so pretty. Thank you. Uh, so it's a battalion detachment to begin with. So at the front, we've got my warlord in the middle, which is a shadow seer. And then on his left, on her left, or to our left, we've got a troop master. Yes. And he has a Harlequin's kiss and a fusion pistol. Yep. And then on the right, we've got a solitaire. Oh, I love these guys. They're kind of like an Eversaw, just... Not quite as cool. Just far cooler. He wears a leather jacket. Have you oh, never we... seen The Matrix? Leather jackets make everything cooler. Okay. So that's the HQs and the elites of my army. And then going from sort of left to right, we've got a unit of troop. Uh, they have a Star Weaver, and they're all equipped with um, Shuriken pistols and Harlequin's kisses. Yep, so this is the pink squad. This is the pink squad. Okay. And your other two squads here? And these other two squads are identical. These squads have uh, three fusion pistols each, and they're all armed with caresses. Fantastic. What's the range on a fusion pistol? Uh, a mighty six inches. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a melting gun. It's pretty cool. I love Harlequins. They've only got one mode, which is just right up in your face. Pretty much. Yeah. There's nothing else. Yep. Okay, what else have you got? Well, you've got a unit of uh, Skyweavers. And these are armed with Zephyr Glaives and Haywire Cannons. I love the bases on these guys. They make them look so cool. Yeah, pretty pleased. They're quite cool looking. Yeah. So this is the Haywire shooting, isn't it? These are the Haywire ones, yeah. So how many shots do they get each? Uh, D6 each. Mm, okay, so this is going to be... It's going to be quite dangerous for my Custodes tanks, isn't it? Hopefully, if they get if they get there. I only have one unit of them at the moment, but I'd like to get another unit just because they're so good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, what next? We've got a Vanguard detachment up on the building. It's led by a second Shadow Seer and three Death Jesters. Oh, very nice. Any relics on these guys? Um, I haven't decided. Yeah, maybe. We, 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 might, we, might, we might get one of the relics out. I don't have many command points in this army. See any downside of How this. many have you got? Uh, I start with ten. Okay. A huge amount of CP. Yeah, and your Warlord trait lets you get one back, does it? It lets me, in your turn, get back as many command points as you spend. So if you spend three command points, if I roll a three, I get all of them back. So it's kind of unique. Again, a very Harlequin thing. Good. And you've got the obligatory Eldar flyer wing, haven't you? I have. Helps make any force just about pretty pretty competitive, doesn't it? They're so good. They really are. <laughs> I think they're, they're so excellent. They complement the force well, I think, as well. A very fast-moving army. Well, it, it, it gives you some long-range... Anti-tank as well, which I think you lack otherwise, don't you? Yes. Because otherwise you've just got to get in my face and yeah. just hope it works. Yeah, we the whole um, sort of anti-tank in this army is 24-inch range, which isn't or six. massively good. Or six. <laughs> yeah, there's no kind of... I have to be really no close to you or, or dead. There's, those are my two options. Yeah, so these are all three Crimson Hunter Exarchs. What are they armed with? Uh, they are all armed with star cannons and pulse lasers. Very nice. So this is 2,000 points. Well, let's see what you're up against, buddy. So here we have it, 2,000 points of Imperium. What do you think to this, Si? We've said it before, but it's uh, it's tried and trusted. Yeah, here we go. So anyone who's not seen this before, this is a double battalion and a heavy sports attachment. Um, so I'll start at the front here. So I have my Warlord. Here we go. He is my Watchmaster, and he has the Warlord trait, the Lord of Hidden Knowledge. He gets command points back on a 5+. plus. Very cool. And um, apart from that, he has uh, the Tomb of the Ectoclade, so he gets an extra, um, essentially a chapter tactic, an extra reroll one Zora. Um, so we can use that uh, for any models which are a 6 with him, so that's really cool. Um, and then I have my Watch Captain with a big Thunder Hammer. 
Always useful. Always useful. Smash Captain's always good. Yeah, no, he's good. They're not quite as efficient as Blood Angel Smash Captain's, but I think it just gives you that little bit of anti-tank, anti-flyer in the game. Um, so he has the Beacon Angela, so I can teleport over a unit of Death Watch to him, and they have to be wholly within uh, six inches of him. So, uh, next up I have three squads of Death Watch. These guys are the all-stars in the army. So I have one squad of eight, which only has one Terminator. Don't usually run with less than two Terminators, but just for points I have here. So everyone else has Storm Shields, apart from the Terminator. What do you think to that, Simon? Uh, you know how much I love my Storm Shields. Yeah, everyone's got Storm Bolters, um, apart from the Vanguard veteran here who lets the whole unit um, fall back out of combat. So really, really important. I have a Black Shield in here and a Terminator. So Black Shield lets me heroically intervene and the Terminator makes them all fearless. So really, really strong units. Um, and the only change for these extra units here is that they have two Terminators. So the whole idea with these units is that you make this horrible situation where either they're shooting against two plus armor or a three plus invulnerable save. And if you're shooting your big guns against them, you're up against a three up invun, and then um, you've got to deal with the fact you're only killing a one wound model after that. Yeah. So those fusion pistols with their six damage. So behind that, I have my Vahalan detachment of uh, Imperial Guards, the Law 32. It's a bit of an unusual um, choice for. Uh... Valhalla there. Yeah, so Valhalla, I've been thinking about this one for a while. Um, the way my guard usually dies to morale, uh, and there's not that many things which benefit just the bare bones Loyal 32, but Valhalla, you lose half the amount of models to morale. So it's really, really useful there. They're also really, really funny because they've got an extra order where they can shoot into combat. So if you manage to pin any of my units in combat, I can just shoot into combat. Though on a one to hit, I hit my own guys. It's a more price to pay. Yeah, I don't mind hitting my guys. I'm in power armour. You're not. Yeah. I'm sure the company commanders will, will agree that it's for the, the greater yeah. cause. Yeah, absolutely. So behind here, I have... Um, what do I have? I have a Custodes Heavy Support Detachment. I have my um, Vexilla Magnifica here, so minus one to hit on all the Custodes units from this banner here. Very strong. Um, I have my Shield Captain. He has a Sentinel Blade. Let's me give a reroll one's aura to hit. So bearing in mind that these all these tanks hit on twos, that's really strong. It's really good. Yeah. Um, so apart from that, I have my Caladius Grav tanks. Now these guys are getting a bit of a reputation, aren't they? Yeah, they've definitely been popping up at... Um, a lot of tournaments. Yeah, especially like very high up the tables. They've been performing really well. Yeah. So um, each Caladius Grav tank is top of seven. It's 14 wounds. It's got some really funky little rules in there. So it's minus two to charge. Uh, and essentially this gun on top is 8 shots, strength 8, minus 3, da minus three D3 damage. And it has a uh, bolt gun on the front there, which is 6 shots, um, strength 6 as well. So really, really strong there. Um, and then minus 2 to charge them, which when you combine that with the Tanglefoot grenades, uh, means that these things are incredibly hard to charge. So it's minus 2 plus 1 dice for charging with the Tanglefoots? Yeah, so Tanglefoot's D6 on top of that, so... Yeah, <laughs> So people can get really, really caught out by that combination. So lastly, we have the Telamon Dreadnought. Now he is armed with two Storm Cannons. So they are 72 inch range on these guys. Um, heavy two, so there's four shots in total for them. Strength nine, minus four AP, flat three damage. I've got to love flat three damage. Looking pretty nasty. So you can re-roll wounds when you um, when you make a attack against a vehicle as well. So that's really really nice. So that he's going to be re-rolling re-rolling ones to hit, and bearing in mind he hits on twos, and then re-rolling all wounds against your vehicles. He's going to do a lot of work. He is toughness eight. He has a two plus armor save and a four up in bun. Very very nice. Uh, he also has a those cannons they can instead of uh, shooting the heavy two profile they can shoot a heavy six profile as well just one damage though but again really nice um it's got a multi-roll here so essentially you can you can shoot a lot of things here um the bolt launcher is heavy five and you can double shoot it as well which is its special rule so lastly we have 85 points set aside what could that be for could it be by any chance an assassin sideboard <laughs> Ta -da! Here we have it. Which one do you think I should take? Comment below in the comment section. I want to know what you think. I'm kind of praying. Uh, everyone knows I love my um, Eversaw Assassins. I absolutely love them. Um, but I think the Vindicare could be quite good in this game against you. Because you don't have an armor save, do you? I have a 4 plus invulnerable save, but you ignore it. So yeah. it's very annoying. Uh, in fact, they're all, they're all so good. 
Yeah. So here we go, guys. This is 2,000 points of Imperium. Let We'll get back to you when we're deployed. The battle lines are drawn. We are all set up for a game of dominate and destroy. Now, if you standard deployments for the objectives, as you can see here, the mission is essentially dominate and destroy, which is you score at the end of each player turn, um, one point per objective um, that you're on at the end of your turn um, and you also score kill points we both have 16 kill points up for grabs don't we buddy we do 16 yeah, kill so points. it's all going to be fairly even i think simon's probably going to dominate this early game because his forces are going to be running towards me other thing to mention is that all uh, first floor ruins are line of sight blocking so even big holes like this here they're not really here so um th this is fairly standard itc rules isn't it uh, as you can see from the train, we have a lot of line of sight blocking here, which is going to heavily favour Simon's Harlequins running up the board against me. Um, so to quickly go over my deployment, um, I've deployed pretty much on my back line, if I could. Um, I've put all my guards mainly ready to get round the uh, Telamon Dreadnought here, because I do not want Simon uh, tagging him. And I have my Custodes tanks all within range of my banner here. So that's really it. I've got two squads of uh, Death Watch in the Sky and I've got my Eversaw Assassin ready to go as well. Vindicare is also a good choice here, but given the amount of line of sight blocking terrain, um, he may just not get anything to shoot at if Simon plays it well. Simon, walk me through your deployment. Again, I've been pretty conservative of my deployment. I'm going to try and use the line of sight blocking terrain to my advantage. So again, I've actually deployed quite far back, even though I probably want to be moving quite far forward. Um, but I have a lot of speed compared to Andy, yeah. so the idea is to make use of my uh, my speed to cross the table when I feel I can actually do as much damage as possible. Flyers starting at the very back to make them yeah. as more difficult to shoot at. <laughs> very good. Right, buddy, should we see who gets first turn? Yes. Okay, let's do this. Um, so you deployed first, Simon. Absolutely. So you get plus one to deployment. Oh, so you rolled a three. There's six. So you go first. <laughs> Unless Simon Caesars. You're feeling lucky, buddy. I'm feeling lucky. Okay, let's do this. This is the best. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Harlequins. Okay, buddy, so this is Harlequins. Turn one. Let's go. Oh, it's so annoying when you get the initiative seized, seized on you. But hey. Things happen. Um, so my thoughts for the first turn is that, well, I've tried to deploy back as far as possible because Simon has to come to me. The um, thing is that I actually outrange him with all my big guns. So even his flyers, they have to come forwards. They have to come into range. He's probably going to use the terrain as much as he can. He's going to try and pick up as many points as he can in the early turns. Um, if he's smart on turn two, he's going to try and force me to drop my death watch in my own uh, deployment zone by trying to zone me out. So let's hope he doesn't realise to do that. Okay, so going into this first term, I need to make sure I try and kill as much of this anti-tank as possible. I think going here into this, I've got to have to concentrate on killing at least one of those Caladius and just try and play around the terrain as much as possible. I need to get up as close as possible uh, because that's where my threat range is. So here we have it, the advance of the Harlequins. Simon, walk me through your movement phase, buddy. Okay, so the Free Crimson Hunters have yeah. moved... Um, as, much, as minimum as they can to still be in range of the Caladius uh, just behind the ruins. Yeah. So I need to be 36 inches away for the water weapons to be in range. Okay. Um, pretty much everything that can fly has advanced. Yeah. So all three of the Star Weavers have now advanced to the centre of the board. <laughs> just just going, hiding, yeah, hiding in here. Out of line of sight, just chilling there for the time being. And then the bikes have moved out from behind the building and they've advanced onto the middle objective. Very nice. Are you hoping to move those again, are you? Yeah, so the reason they're in a big line like this is because I need to keep them within three inches of the Shadow Seer behind yep. the building so that we can double move them in the Psychic Phase. Very nice. Psychic Phase, Simon, are you nervous? Yeah. Your guys I don't think are I'm, a I, little bit in the open here. I haven't had a Psychic Phase for probably four months because <laughs> I've been playing Knights for the last few games. Yes. Okay, what are you casting first? So first, Shadow Seer behind here is going to cast Veil of Tears onto the bikes. Okay, warp, warp charge is it? It's warp charge seven. Ooh, it's big numbers. It is big numbers. So warp charge seven goes Ooh, off with a ten. Very so nice. So they are additional minus one to hit. Okay, and just to clarify, you've cast, uh, you've um, done prismatic blur on these guys. I have well. done prismatic blur so on these. Three, three up, up invulnerable save. Right, next power is going to be. 
Twilight Pathways, and it's going to be on the bikes as well. What do they do? That allows them to move as if it was the movement phase. Ooh, okay. Let's and see where these... Charge six. Goes off on a seven. So Simon, start of the shooting phase. We are first of all going with um, the first Crimson Hunter Actark into my poor Caladius Grav. Don't care. You're minus one to hit, buddy. Cool. I'm minus one for moving as well, but I'm Ballistic Seal 2+, plus, so I'm hitting you on fours. Okay. So it'll be the Pulse Laser first. Uh, so hidden on fours, rerolling ones. Both misses. Good start to the game. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. And the two star cannons. Three hits. And wounding on fives. With a reroll though. No rerolls because it's not against fly. He's got fly. Oh, he does have fly. Yeah, yes. that's a good point. Top a tank. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it doesn't have. Yeah. Let's see what happens with a five up in bar. Yes! Can I get your action? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> So, second one, same target. I don't think I'll be as jammy all game. So, pulse laser. Uh, one hit. One wound. Five up in bar! Yay! Oh, <laughs> Ones or sixes? Star cannons. Three hits. And fives. Three rolls. Three wounds. Uh oh. Oh, to go through. That's two D3 damage. Oh, of course. <laughs> Why? Because it, because it wouldn't be anything else. Uh, two, two damage. Two damage. <laughs> oh, Last dude. plane. Same That's... target. So, pulse laser. One hit, yep. Uh, one wound, because you're toughness seven. Yep. Oh, goes through. That's three damage. So, okay, up to five. five. Oh. Yep. And then the star cannons. Uh, three hits. Uh, one so far. One. Just one. Okay, I want the dice which is rolling lots of sixes. That doesn't roll sixes. Okay. Have a D three damage. Roll on, roll on, roll on. Oh, oh, three. So five, eight damage. Eight total. Oh, you've degraded it. Fantastic. How very rude of you. Except we have the bikes. How are you splitting the shooting? So. The two bikes that can see the uh, damaged tank will fire into it. Yep. The uh, rest will fire into the undamaged Gladius. Okay, right. Which ones are you going to do first? So I'll do the two into the damaged one. Okay. So D6 shots each. Oh, not many. Um, I'm going to spend a CP to re-roll one of those. Oh, okay. Early in the game, okay. Oh, five shots. Oh, let's see if I get my CP back. How many dice? How many dice? Nope. No. <laughs> So, hitting on threes. Fours. Not bad. Uh, four, yeah, sorry, fours. Because yeah. you're minus one to hit. And I'm only on fives, but fours, because of how we're, fours mortal wounds. Die. So, three mortal wounds. Okay. And one normal save. One save. That one is cocked. Yay, keep going, keep going. Yay. That's one damage. So, uh, three, four extra damage. Are you minus one on those shots, are you? Uh, yeah, those with minus one, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So, number four damage takes yeah. it to 12. I'll be, in, I'll be in cover, so I'm good. Oh, you're good, yeah. You're in cover. Yeah. So, just takes it on to 11 now. Three left. Oh. Cool. Keep going. Keep going. So, Rest of the shots. Yep, going into the other one. So, D6 shots each. Six, ten, fourteen shots. I need to do something about these guys. I need to do something about these guys. Uh, this guy's also in range of the banner as well, isn't he? So, yep. fours. Not too bad. Pretty good. And I can fours again. One, two, three, four wounds and... Four mortals, yeah. Uh, four, four mortals and three regular saves. Oh, three regulars. Oh, they're all safe. Oh, no, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Don't need any of that. Uh, so four mortal wounds on two. Okay. We have the jet bites are going to try and charge the guard. Let's see what happens. You need a seven, buddy. A seven. So here we go. Get seven exactly. <laughs> Only just. <laughs> right, we'll get back to you when Simon's piled in. So Simon is all piled in and ready to attack. After piling, he's managed to get three in range. Three attacks from each of the bikes, so no attacks. Hidden on freeze. And killing them on freeze, AP minus uh -oh. two. 
Mm. Only four, though. Four guardsmen dead. Okay, so guardsmen are removed. I'm still on the objective. And Simon has consolidated. So is that the end of the fight phase? Uh, no, I've spent three CP for war dancers. Uh oh. <laughs> which uh, lets me move in a uh, pile in and fight again. Fantastic. So, what's your aim when you're going to be doing this? The aim here is to basically pin this guard unit down. That's the idea here. Okay. So, essentially, what he's going to do here, guys, is that when he piles in, he's not actually going to pile in to within an inch. So he's not going to attack me. Nope. Um, but when he consolidates, he's going to wrap this one unit in combat so I can't actually fall back in my turn. So here we have it, after Simon has consolidated from his second activation he has pinned this one poor guardsman in combat. Now I do get to attack back and I do have a morale so hopefully I fail that. Okay so morale, this is big, this is big. If I do not fail this morale check I am in trouble, I need a four. No! <laughs> I'm gonna re-roll that. No! <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Right, so these things are immune to shooting next turn. Good play, Simon. Good play. Okay, so this is a really interesting tactic that Simon's done to me here. So by reactivating the um, the unit of jet bikes, he's uh, managed to pin my uh, my unit of guardsmen in combat, which is huge because I can't shoot them next turn. Now, you may be asking yourself, how does he reactivate his unit if he's not within an inch of enemy models? And that's really, really interesting. So the rules for the fight phase for activating models is either you have to be in an inch of model, enemy models, or you have to have made a successful charge this turn. Now, Simon made a successful charge. So even though when he went to reactivate his models, he wasn't within an inch, because he's charged, he can do that. So what he does is he piles in, he still doesn't come within an inch of me, so he doesn't have to attack me again, because the more models he kills, the more chance that I was gonna fail that morale check. Um, and then he consolidates round and he traps my model on three different points. Um, and by doing that, I can't actually move out of combat. And this is a huge problem for me next turn. So, well played, Simon. So here we have it, end of the turn. Simon, what did you score, buddy? Walk me through it. So we've scored one point here with the Death Jester here. And we've scored a second one from the Death Jester on this side over here. Yeah. And of course... Because I've passed my morale check here, you do um, you don't score the objective over here because I'm so. objective secured. And I am fast attack. Yes, they're going to be a pain to shift. They're minus two to hit and um... three plus a vulnerable save as well. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Right, this is going to be an interesting turn one for uh, the Imperium. Right, so priorities turn one number one. I need to get first strike. Uh, Simon failed to do that. I need to be on at least two objectives. I've got to keep myself in the game here. Now, that unit of Harlequin jet bikes, that is going to be a nightmare to shift. It can fall back, it can charge, it's minus two to hit, and it's got a three open run. Uh, I've got to hope I get a little bit lucky and, t and cut that thing down to size. And with the shooting, hopefully I'm just going to try and shoot as many of Simon's planes as possible. Hopefully I kill at least one. Okay, so this is my turn one movement phase. So I've moved the guardsman into two lines round of this Telemon Dreadnought here. Because um, I'm guessing Simon next turn is going to fall this unit back here and try and tie the Telemon up, which is going to be utterly annoying for me. Um, I positioned... Um uh, position my three uh, shooting units so that with the uh, Vexilla and the and the shield captain in the middle and they're going to be aiming at these tanks here and the death watch are going to try and sort out these um oh, these jet bikes oh these jet bikes simon what have you done to me what have you done to me they're pretty good they're really good <laughs> Okay, and at the start of the movement phase, Simon's done something which just to try and get in my head even more than he already has. And he, what have you done, buddy? So I spent two CP to use a stratagem called Hero's Path, which is uh, at the beginning of a movement phase. Um, if you've got a Death Jester, a Shadow Seer, and a Solitaire in six into each other, remove them from the table, and then at the end of the movement phase, put them anywhere, nine inches away from the enemy. Okay, so Hero's Path. Uh, you can use it in any movement phase. It's really good in your opponent's phase because it just makes your opponent second guess where these guys could end up, you know, at the end of the phase. Um, what I'm planning to do is put them in a position where they're going to be out of line of sight so we can't shoot them. Um, with the bikes where they are now, they're in a great position that they are the closest unit so I can put them behind the bikes to make sure they're going to be safe for this turn so I can execute a better plan with them next turn. Simon's Death Jester has ended up here just facing down against the forces but staying just out of line of sight and we have your solitaire and your 
Shadow Seer. Shadow Seer. Just hiding out behind your big unit of unkillable bikes. And that means you're going to be able to double move them next time as well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Oh, the Gladius here is going to go into your first Crimson Hunter X up. Okay. Okay, so eight shots. And I reroll once and I hit you on fours. Uh, so that is one, two, three. Oh dear. And we draw threes. Uh, no, that's just one wound. That's one, one wound. One save, buddy. So AP minus? Minus three. So six up save. Nope. That goes through. D3 damage. Four, mighty one. One damage. Okay. And then six shots and bolt guns. Uh, Reroll ones. Hit you on fours. Uh, I'll take that. Uh, nothing. Ooh. Okay, you know, it happens. Performance issues. Um, I'm going to do the injured one next. I'm going to go into the same one. Excellent. So I believe this is down in one bracket, this one. Yep. So it's going to be hitting on fives. Uh, Reroll ones. Uh, that's two hits. <laughs> Yay, two wounds. Double the effectiveness of last time. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> and six shots. Uh, so that is three hits. Three hits. Uh, no wounds. And for the last one, I'm going to use the big guy. Big guy's coming into you as well. Ouch. This is uh, this is what I've been dreading, because I've not seen a tell on fire yet, so this will be interesting. Okay, so this is four shots. Uh, uh, so that's one. One hit. <laughs> one wind. One wind. Let's have a look. AP minus three again, is it? Yeah. No, it goes through. Okay, so flat three damage. Okay, so it's taking four damage now. And my bolt launcher, which is hideously out of range. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first up, the slum captain's going to charge uh, into your group of bikes, and he's going to declare your your cycler as well. Okay. You're just within 12. <laughs> so we're not charging the cycler, at least. <laughs> okay, so he's going to come into here, and Death Watch are going to come in as well. Yeah, uh, They're in. Okay, so here we have it. So I'm um, all piled in. Um, I've left uh, one guy just within six inches of my uh, Watchmaster here. So I've got full re-rolls, which I'm going to need because I'm going to be hitting on fives. Um, and apart from that, um, this guy here is just within an inch of this guy because the guardsman's base is only uh, 25 mil, so it's less than an inch. So this guy's within an inch and these guys are all within an inch of them. Cheeky yeah. little trick there. Okay, so let's get on with the fight phase. Okay, so this is... 14 attacks, oh, sorry, 16 attacks even, and I reroll ones and twos. And it's fives to hit me because I'm minus two. <laughs> and I. And I reroll ones because of my chap tactic. One! One. <laughs> One free plus save. Watch I pass. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so, and then I'm going to do my captain here. Excellent. He's going to pile in. So he gets four attacks. Yay! That's pretty good. He's winning them on twos. twos. Yay! Three wins. I'm going to try and shrug these off with my three plus invulnerable save. Uh, I shrug two of them off. So flat three damage. And it kills a bike. And oh, I've got my Terminators to attack as well. Um, one hit. One wind. He's yeah. fine from the Terminator. Okay, so I've killed a bike. So Simon's attacks back when he's piled in, one still out of range. Um, so that just leaves um, your four bikes. So you're doing three onto the captain and one onto the Death Watch, is it? Uh, one into the Guardsman. Okay, let's so do it. Do one into the Guardsman. So in on freeze. Uh, wounding on freeze. Free wounds, so free dead. Safety free dead the Guardsman. Yep, yeah. okay, I'll pull those in a moment. The Guardsman did attack, by the way, guys. They did nothing. Cool. <laughs> And this is going into the Watch Captain, so hidden on freeze. That's pretty good. Uh, wounding on fours. One, two, just the three saves there. So providing I don't fa fail them all, right? Yeah. Famous last words! Ooh. Ooh! So he takes four damage. Yay, he's still alive! <laughs> Okay, so end of the turn, I've scored an objective here. I've scored an objective over here because my guardsmen are still alive. And that's it, guys.
I've not scored a first strike. I failed to kill any of these, and I have utterly failed to kill any of these. Sad times, my guardsmen yet again did not fail the morale. I'd really have liked them to fail the, the uh, morale the first time round. Yes. Yeah, yeah there'd be good. a completely different game at this point. Okay, so this is on to uh, Harlequins, turn two. Cool, really pleased with my first turn. Um, the bikes being tied in combat was really, really helpful to me now, so that's going to be very annoying now for Andy to shift in his next turn. This turn now, I do have to be prepared for an assassin and his other two Death Watch squads. My aim here originally was to screen him out in my back area. I'm so far forward now that I might as well not bother, so I'm going to go as far forward in this turn, try and do as much damage here now, and just try and claim as much of objectives as I can. So, here we have it. Simon's movement phase. Take me through it, buddy. Cool. The Crimson Hunters have now moved and have migrated to the centre of the table. Okay. They're look at, looking back up the board. Yeah, well, with the new rules now that you don't need uh, like a front angle now, it's, you can be pretty tricky with the way you face yeah. them. They're not that new, those rules, you know. That is 8th edition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, What's going on in this absolute mess here? So the bikes have actually stayed in combat here. They're not going to go out of the combat, mainly because they're still pinned in, so they still can't be shot at for the time being. Yeah, it's an interesting dilemma, really, isn't it? Do you um, move out, but then obviously the Death Watch can shoot you as soon as you move out, yep. even though you can reassault, can't you? Correct. Um, but then you lose all your haywire shooting. So that's why I kind of left the Guardsmen like that, just to see what you were going to do, really. Yes. And obviously you can't get your prismatic blur, so... I cannot. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. I was wondering which way you were going to go with that. Um, the reason I kept them on there was obviously I'm still on the objective. You are. Points win games. Um, you've got a very, very sneaky solitaire here who has blitz forward. He's got my warlord in sights. And you've got your psyche. Yeah, so she's come up to help with the um, solitaire to help maybe get um, warlord. Ooh, okay, let's see what happens. Psychic phase. What's coming up first? Cool, so I think we're going to cast Smite into the Death Watch here. Okay, roll it up. Ah, it goes off on a seven. So D3 mortal wounds. Just the one. Okay, I'll take that on the Terminator. And what's next? And we're going to cast Veil of Tears onto the Solitaire to try and okay. give him minus one. So cast on a seven. And goes off on an eight. I'll see if I can deny that with my custodies. That's denied. <laughs> okay, that's good. And that cost a command point. Do I get it back? Yes, I do. And do I get it back? I need to roll a one for Player of Twilight. I do not. <laughs> Okay. See, if you had a normal Warlord trait, you'd have got one back there. Well, I'd, I'd like CP at this point, so I'd be happy if anything. <laughs> You've only got one left. <laughs> I have you? one CP left. On with the shooting. So these guys are still in combat. Um, so what are you shooting with first? So I think what we're going to shoot with first is the Crimson Hunters again. And we're going to try and kill this damaged one here still. Yeah, so on four wounds left. He's on four wounds left. So I'm going to go the other direction this time. So I'm going to go with this plane okay. into that one. So it's still minus one to hit. Yep. So the two pulse laser shots are hitting on fours with reeling ones. Both hit. Uh, we're going to go freeze. One wound. Nope, goes through. through. Three damage. Okay, it's down to one. And the star cannons. And reeling ones. And fives to wound. But rerolling because you have fly. One from that. Ooh, let's see what happens. Yeah, like that's a save. <laughs> Come through when you need them. Next one. So exactly the same, same target. So the pulse laser. Rerolling ones. Both hit. Freeze to wound. Two wounds. Uh oh. Oh no, it's dead. It is dead. Does it explode? It does explode. Uh, I'm going to re-roll that. Oh, okay. It no! does explode. <laughs> okay, so it does D3 mortal wounds to everything around it. So that is everything excluding the Death Watch here. So on to the Solitaire. Does two. Okay. And on to your Shadow, Shadow Seer. Shadow Seer. Does two. At least Watch. I'm consistent. Okay. So on to your Watch Master. Yep. A One. single mortal wound. Yep. Onto the guardsman. Two mortal wounds on the guardsman. Yep. I pull these two here. Next. Onto the shield captain. 
and mortal wounds. Yep. And on to the banner. Three, Three mortal wounds. Ooh. And on to the Teleman. Yep. A single mortal wounds. Okay, and he um, he always gets a six up save. That is good. And I and think on it's to... onto the other guard squad here as well. Um, yes, it will be. And a mortal wound to that guard squad as well. And don't forget the other the other tank oh, over the here. Other tank. Three mortal wounds to that and one. And on to the company commander. And three mortal wounds to him. <laughs> so he's down to a wound. Oh dear, this couldn't go any worse. The last flyer here is going to go into this injured tank who's now taken seven wounds thanks to a cheeky D3 mortal wounds. Cool. So same again. Pull slays are first. Both hit. But it has fly. Does uh, stop it. One wound. No, oh, goes through. Three That's damage. Three damage. Yep. And the dead. star cannons. Oh, we really ones. Uh, four, uh, sorry, three hits. And fives. Rerolling because you fly. Two from that. Nope. Let's go through. The two D3s. Another three damage. Oh, he's down to one wound. A single wound left. Yes. <laughs> okay, what's next? Uh, I think we're going to try and finish it with the Shadow Seer here. Ooh. And she's going to fire her Phantasm Grenade Launcher into it. This thing never does anything. Nope, never. Ever, ever, ever. Until does. now. Until now. So you, let me refresh. You actually just, you, you've no idea what it does because it Absolutely never does anything. Absolutely no idea because it's never done anything. No one has any idea what it does. I wouldn't even. I, I wouldn't even think if you got the rules wrong, anyone would actually know what it does. No, it's fine. So, uh, I rolled a hit, so it is minus one to hit still, I believe. Yep. So I'm hitting you on freeze. The oh, hits. we're gonna find out what it does. Uh, roll two d six. If the roll is equal to or greater than the target unit's leadership, it suffers d three mortal wounds. Okay. So what's the leadership of a um, graph tank, Andy? Okay, buddy. So you need a nine. Okay, so a nine or higher. Oh, it's an eight! So I could spend my last command points to try and kill this tank, which would be funny. <laughs> or I could probably save it for something more useful maybe later on. I, I think you need to do it now that I've heckled you so much about it. I think so. Yeah. Because I'm absolutely convinced that this one will also explode. I, I'm also kind of convinced about that. Yeah, so okay. I will spend my last command points to try and make this explode. <laughs> so it takes D3 mortal wounds, but it only has one wound left. Yeah. So that one also explains. Andy, would you like to, uh, to roll to see if this one I don't ever want to. Oh, oh, it doesn't explain. Do you want to re-roll it? Oh, you can't. You're very good it. No, these tanks are going to do something in one of our battle reports. No spoilers for the last one either. No, yeah, no, no. Oh, that's fantastic. Right, let's get on with this very messy assault phase. Is going to assault the Watchmaster. I'm going to tangle foot you. I'm just telling you now. Um, so that is an extra two inches to your charge. What is it? Do you get tangle foot from on this guy? Yep. Does he have tangle foot grenades? No, the custodies do. Oh no way! Is that, that's cheeky. Yes, it is. Okay, so I need a five, I guess. Yep. <laughs> it's never gonna matter. No, fair enough. <laughs> He's on a mission. It'll go to there. Okay. And the uh, shadow seer will also attempt to. Charge, but she's going to charge the uh, the company commander that only has a single wound left. Okay, that's it. That's oh, I think charge. you're in there. I think I'm in. Yep. Lovely. Okay, buddy. Let's see. Where are you going to go with first? I'm going to do the solitaire against your warlord. It's your watchmaster. Yep. Okay. So he's blitzed. So he has ten attacks, and he's going to use his caress, which is strength five. AP minus two and one damage. Okay. So. I'm expecting big things from this. Yep, here we go. So I'm hitting on twos. So that's pretty good so far. I'm not worried. I'm winning on threes. Uh, a little less good. So what was this, minus one or minus two? This is minus two. Okay, so four ups. And I'm gonna reroll one for his warlord trait. And I'm going to re-roll one... Uh, D3s each, are they? No, just one damage. I'm not going to bother re-rolling any at once. Okay, so okay, two, that's two, 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 two dots. Okay. 
Right, I'm going to interrupt with the captain here. And uh, just to say Simon has eventually decided to read his rules about the bikes and realised the minus one is only in shooting. Yes, my mistake. I'm sorry, <laughs> everyone. I know I'm going to get flack from that in the comments. I and as he should. Yeah, Look at this guilty face. I, I do feel bad. I completely forgot about it, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go with my uh, hammer captain yeah, see if I'll I can do it. Pay back now. Uh, Reroll ones. Uh, that's three hits. Uh, no, you're not minus anything, are you? I'm not minus anything now. Yeah, so that's four hits. So on twos. And um, I reroll once because of my chapter tactic. Still alive. That is four wounds and four pin buns. It's four pin buns this time. Yes, because no prismatic blur. Oh, Ooh. that's four bikes dead. Uh, I have no CP left. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> he told you to reroll that one CP. <laughs> Of course, Andy makes me re-roll my, my, my dice to... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that kind of, oh. that kind of is bad. Uh, I'm not going to lie there, Simon. He is the man of the match so far, I think. That that's may well probably, have saved you. That's probably cost me the game. Four hits, four bikes. Oh, yeah. Happens every time, right? Pretty much. Yeah. The Solitaire's time. Not Solitaire, the Shadow Seer's turn now. I am. I'm going to beat you to death with my uh, happy stick. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I'm hitting you on twos. I'm strength five, and AP minus one, so he will need you on threes. Two wounds. Ooh, five up in buns! They're not five up in buns. And it's a D3 damage each. Ah, oh, he's very dead before. Well, he's one wound left, so. You just want to see what he scored. Pretty much. Four. They <laughs> killed him twice over. So it's, he is dead. So it's no not more. quite the 12 wounds my hammer captain just did. Not quite, but I have got rid of Kurnov's Aquila. Uh, no, it's the other one. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. Okay, and your bike, last of all. The last bike. He's going to try and get some vengeance. Uh, he's going to try and kill this watch captain. Yeah. So I'm hitting him on freeze. And I'm wounding him on fours. Ooh. One. How many wins has this guy got left, actually? One. One. So. Oh. Go away. <laughs> you can leave. Okay. Um, that was quite nasty. He's going to attack again when he dies. Oh, cool. Excellent. Uh, all hits. All wins. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> you watch this guy tank all four of these now. Boom. Oh! oh. If so only close. you had command points. If only left. I had CP. <laughs> Down to three. <laughs> Just to say, the player of Twilight's finally came in on my uh, in my in death does duty end. Um, but unfortunately, he still still rolled a three on yep, his button. Yeah, still. <laughs> but, I got, but I have a, a single CP left now for the remainder of this battle, which is quite nice. Yep. Hang on to that one. Sometimes you need it. You know, I might take your advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And with that, I think all of the assaults are over. No, Except no, this you've guy. Got your watchmaster. Yeah, he's going to attack back Ooh, now. I'm hoping he's going to beat himself to death against me now. Yeah. Okay, Simon, so here we go. So this is four attacks into your cheeky little solitaire here who has the suit of hidden knives. So I believe I don't really want to roll ones. So here we go on twos. They're all hit. Oh, oh big anti climax after finding out what that relic did. And um, your strength. I'm touching three. Okay. So they're all wounds, buddy. Okay. And Salter has a 3 plus invulnerable save. Which he passes all of them. So it's, it's, it's more reliable than a 4 up, isn't it, buddy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, where, where did the bikes used to be? That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. They've done their job. Where are your tanks, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> On the dead pile. Yeah. <laughs> End of turn recap. I have one I have three command points left. Simon has one. Um, you scored, how many points did you score, buddy? I scored eight points in this turn. So four for being on the objectives, four kill points, and I scored one point this turn. So that is massive. So you're on ten points to my uh, three. Yeah, so good score so far. Let's see if I can catch up in Imperium, turn two. Okay, so um, Imperium, turn two. So it was a big turn for Simon last time, and thank God that... Um, that hammer captain really, really saved me there. Um, so I think the thing to do now, actually, is take Simon. He, he's left his backfield open. I'm going to try and take him off his objectives. He's got death gestures just sitting there, and that's what's scoring him the points. Um, although I was trying to concentrate on the flyers for the first turn, now he's pretty much killed all of my tanks. I've only got a Dreadmore left. Those flyers are going to be next to useless, actually, when... Um, 
when, when my last dreadnought's dead. So I think try and kill the transports, try and kill those death jesters, and just get him out of a scoring uh, a scoring position. I think that's the way forwards here. Now he's left his Shadow Seer open, he's left his uh, Solitaire open, and I've got a full Death Watch squad there next to a Watchmaster. So hopefully those two guys are going to be dead. Um, so it's going to be a big turn. I'm going to bring down at least one Death Watch squad and. Um, Hopefully it goes well. But it can't go any worse than last turn, can it? This is my uh, movement phase. I've done done quite a few things here. So um, I've dropped my Death Watch around here. The idea is that um, at least uh, these four are closer to um, this Death Jester. I've got the other four here are closer to um, that Death Jester here. So that, that's going to be interesting. I've dropped my Eversaur over here. I was in a bit of a debate whether you know to use him or not, um, but I think actually if I can remove you from this objective over here, I can score points continuously for the rest of the game. Yeah, and I, I do have a Jeff Death Jester just hidden just behind this building, so he's really important to uh, remove because otherwise I'm not going to have much much hope of removing him. I've kept one unit of Death Watch in the sky still. Reason being, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, just, it's just a reactive thing. So when Simon's actually out of his transports, I can I can really punish him because that's when he's going to be vulnerable. Now, my other squad over here has formed the firing line, as you can see. Um, and we're, with the intent on killing these, these characters here. And if not, I've got the characters lined up to charge in as well. So hopefully that will go well. Um, so that's it really, the uh, Dreadnought stayed still so he, um, he doesn't suffer a minus one to hit because all of his weapons are heavy and uh, he's still next to the shield captain and the banner. I'm going to pretty much ignore the planes this turn I think, um, given that the only thing they can kill now is the Dreadnought. And the guard still, still survived and they're still on the backfield objective here. Yep, no they are. They've, um, <laughs> they've had a mixed, uh, mixed performance this game. Okay, so I think first of all, I'm going to shoot the Dreadnought. I'm going to shoot him at this first transport here. So I'm going to the shoot... transport just behind here. You can just see it just between the flyers. Yep. So it's going to be the four shots into there, and um, because he hasn't moved, he can shoot his spiculous bolt rifle twice, and that's going to go into that annoying solitaire. Okay. Okay, so four shots first of all. He's so, minus one to hit, so you're hitting on threes. Oh, it's always twos when you get re-rolled. <laughs> And they're re-rolling at the vehicles, which is so not needed, buddy. So that is three saves. That's fine. Four plus invulnerables for being awesome Harlequins. So one just, goes through. So just three damage. So he's got three wounds left on that one. Okay, and then it's ten shots into your... So five shots into your solitaire. Are you minus one to hit on him? He is not minus one to hit. Oh, this is going to make for a sad solitaire. Um, and strength five, so on threes. One, two, three, four, five wounds. Okay, this guy still has his three plus a minimal save. Still see if he can, he can save him. Oh, he's down to one. He's down to a single wound. Hey, buddy, so this is going to be um, death by guardsman. Apparently. Yep, so bring it in here. So guardsman, they're going to do first round, second round fire on two. You're so out there. Not even worried. Oh, it's on fours. It's toughness three, though, so he's only on fours. Oh, three wounds. So he's, he needs to pass all three of these. Which Fine. he does. <laughs> and we're going to do the whole thing again with the rest of the shots. Um, plus one for the uh, last pistol. Oh, that looks yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, that looks very little wounds. <laughs> uh, so that is five. That's pretty good. Come on, Solitaire. Death by Guardsman coming up. Oh, you're kidding me. He's still alive. <laughs> He's still there. Oh, fantastic. Um, shield Captain he gets two shots. There he rolls ones. Uh, that is one wound. Just stop He's still it. fine. <laughs> right, death watch time. Uh, I'm going to do this guy first. He's going to shoot into him. So okay. that's two shots. Two hits. Two wounds. Yes! Oh, he's finally He's down. finally gone. But look how much firepower he soaked up. There we go. <laughs> Best well done. Bit of one. one. Okay, buddy, so that was 24 wounds onto them, and uh, unsurprisingly, that is a dead Shadow Seer. It is. Unsurprisingly, um, millions of Storm Bolters killed a Toughness Free Elder. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was inevitable. Okay, so over here, so I've lined up my Death Watch so that um, these four are slightly closer to this one, 
and uh, these three over here are slightly closer to this Death Jester. Um, just because it's a million bolt shots, uh, we're going to get back to you um, when I've rolled them all up, see how many wounds Simon's got. We go, so there is eight wounds on this Death Jester. Okay, so here's some wounds on Death Jester. He takes three wounds, so he's down to two. Okay, and uh, seven wounds on this one. Thank you, and seven wounds on this one. And he takes two, so he's down to three. My cheeky little adversary in the corner of that, he's going to shoot his pistol. And that is three hits. And that is three wounds. And three wounds from the Eversaw. And he takes two wounds, so he's down to three wounds on him as well. Okay, so charges over here. I'm going to I'm going to charge into both of these, see what happens. Good. I will overwatch. I will use my shirt and cannon profile. And nope. nothing with the first one. Second one. And the second one. Nope. And nothing. And just to save time, we're going to go over with the Eversaw as well in the corner. Oh, I roll my charge up, shall I? Roll uh, my charge. Yep. Yeah. Seven inches, so that's no for that one. Um, I'm going to... No, I'm going to leave it. I... Uh, no, I'm going to I'm going to re-roll for command point. Okay. Yay! And do I get one back? No. I do not. And do I get one back? No, I'm down to two. Okay. And uh, over here. Okay, and I will obviously overwatch the Eversaw with nothing again. Okay, Eversaw's turn. Uh, I think he's in. 14 in charge. There we go. We'll get back to you once we're all piled in. Okay, so I've done a little conga line. Reason being, these guys are obsec. Um, I'm doing that maybe over um, killing them. So I don't think I need to necessarily. But anyway, I get five attacks onto this guy. Uh, that's four. Um, three. Oh, it's enough to kill you. It is enough to kill me. Fail two, Or none. I have found none, so he is still alive. Fine, I'm going to attack with my um, Eversaw. Let the angry man with the skull face come in. Um, that is going to be using my claw, obviously. Okay, so that is six, buddy. Oh, I could probably do a passing many of these. Uh, he looks like three. three, so he's, he's dead. dead. He is dead. So that is one of the Death Jesters down. So I'm going to consolidate just back into the cover hit. Good. So I guess I'll attack back with the Death Jester. So he only gets three attacks. So he hits twice. And doesn't move at all because he's only strength three. So going into turn three, I need to really pull back now. I need to get some of these objectives off this Death Watch. I feel a plan now is to dedicate some of my troop squads from their vehicles into this massive conga lines death watch squad to get them off two objectives or everything else is going to start moving into a position to screen off the deep striking final squad that's going to arrive in andy's turn three um, my aim for this one is to just claim back some of my objectives get some points back and hope that the next death watch squad doesn't start destroying my units okay here we have it simon what have you been up to over here uh screening <laughs> I like this. I like this a lot. So what Simon's done here is that my Death Watch squad here is conga lined here. He has pulled back all of his characters. Um, he's got a character here who can ignore Overwatch. And he's put all of his units in here. Now, as you can see, he's put his flyers around here. He's put a character over here. He's put his... Um, He's put his transport here, he's got some transports inside the building and a character over here and effectively what he's done is he's screened me out of 15 inches. So the idea with this zoning is with Andy's Death Watch squads I've got to try and keep them out of rapid fire range. Now normally it's going to be a 12 inch rapid fire with bolt guns however one of the rounds that Death Watch have allow him to overwatch at 15 inches. My aim here is to keep them outside of that 15 inches to reduce the amount of firepower coming into my squads. Um, and over here what he's going to aim to do is get a cheeky charge against my Eversaw Assassin. See if he can take him out. Let's see how that works out for you. Um, and you've kept your transport on the objective over here. I have, yes. You were debating about that, weren't you? About, you know, whether or not the old uh, Telemon over here is going to have his day and just shoot him to death next turn, but... I think so, but um, at the moment, with the score being so close and with yeah, Death Watch being so tough to kill, I really need to get as many points as I can here. Okay, so back to the psychic phase then. So I'm gonna cast Fog of Dreams onto the Death Watch squad uh, to make them minus one to hit me. 
Ooh, that's not a six. Um, I will not. There's no redeeming that. <laughs> no, that was pretty bad. So I think we're just going to use um, Mirror of Minds because it's a bit of fun. Okay. Walk me through it. What are we doing? So let's see if it casts. It casts on Nate. Yep. So me and you now need to roll off. Yep. And if I score equal to or higher than your dice roll, you take a mortal wound. And we just keep rolling until uh, either the squad is dead or that you beat me. Okay. And usually if Andy's rolling, he'll probably beat me immediately. So I rolled a five. Yeah. Uh, six immediately and the spell fails. <laughs> like I said. So in one of our first battle reports ever, you literally killed a bunch of custodians with us, didn't you? I did, yeah. It was good fun. Uh, yeah. Death Watch, however, are so broken, in <laughs> fact, that uh, <laughs> they're, they're apparently immune to it. Yes. Okay. So on to shooting phase. Shadow Seer first. Are you going after my Death Watch? I am. So Phantasm Grenade Launcher. So two's to hit. Hits. Uh, leadership I'd want to leave on a Death Watch squad is nine. Yeah. Pretty high. Okay. So Phantasm Grenade Launcher. Yep. So hitting you on two. Shadow Seer. Hits. Uh, eight or higher. Nine or higher. Nine or higher. Six, seven, eight. Not quite. I think it's got to be equal to or higher. So my leadership is nine. Your leadership nine. Yeah. Fails? Sergeant. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do the Troop Master's Fusion Pistol, which hits on twos. That's a hit. And wounds on twos, because it's strength eight. And it wounds on twos. Yay! Oh, no! And kill one. it kills a guy. It does. He's wearing three inches. <laughs> he needs three wounds. <laughs> okay. Do I take that on a... Oh, it's all Storm Shield, buddy. Okay. You killed a Storm Shield. Cool. And then the first squad... Three fusion pistols. Okay. That's two. And two's to wound. Uh, one wound. Come again. on, Storm Shield! Yay! And the two shogun pistols from the same squad. And four to wound. One wound from the Terminator. Are you oh, kidding me? He takes a wound on Terminator. That's going to be annoying. And then, whoop, and exactly the same from the other squad next to him. So, three um, fusion pistols. Two's to wound. Two wounds from fusion. Oh, it has to be on the Terminator. Saved. And... Saved! Oh. How good is the Terminator? Who said Terminators were bad in 8th edition? It's fine, it's going to die to uh, shuriken pistols now. So, the two shuriken pistols in that squad... Uh, mm. One wound on the shuriken pistol. There you go. Oh, Told you. Me. Told you. Shuriken pistols. Oh. Doing what fusion apparently cannot. Yes. <laughs> so a terminator's down. That's always nice. I told you terminators were useless in eighth edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, we'll point? do the death jester here into the squad. He'll use the shuriken cannon profile. So three shots. Okay. So, hits on twos. And wounds on threes. Two more wounds. Yep, no AP on those. Oh, storm shields. I'm good. Storm shields are always good. And the second one, just on the other side. Yep. So, twos again. And threes. One more. Just one more. Storm shield again. Yes. Just getting warmed up. There we go. Yeah. Okay, what's next? So next up we have the Skyweavers going into the Death Watch. Yep. Uh, so these are all going to Death Watch as well. Uh, I've got them here. So hidden on freeze. Ooh. Wounding on freeze. That's two wounds from them. Okay, I'm going to warm my Storm Shield saves back up. There we go, buddy. Bloody storm shields. <laughs> Second transport, same target. Mm, pretty accurate shooting. That again to be nice. That'll do. So that's free. It. Uh, they're all. They're, they're all free, storm, storm, storm shields. Oh, you got one. I got one. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, that's one more storm shield. Thanks. <laughs> I'll take this guy here. Cool. And then I guess it's the Crimson Hunters. So. I was going to try and throw some Crimson Hunters into the Telamon, 
But honestly, I'd have to take eight wounds off it to even bracket it to the first one. Yes. So I'm probably just going to leave it alone and hope that he doesn't just kill my flyers next well, time. Well, you know, let's face it, he has done nothing this game so far. Yeah, and I'm kind of hoping he <laughs> continues to, on that trend. So at the moment, I just want to just clear off this Death Watch squad. Okay, I, that's, that's, I think that's a good idea. So we'll do this one first into the same squad. So start with the pulse lasers as usual. Rerolling ones. One hit. Two wounds, one wound. Storm shield save. Bloody storm shields. <laughs> Stock cannons. Nothing. Do you not hit? Oh no, it's still on freeze. No, no, I keep two in. Uh, two, so freeze to wind. Uh, two wounds. Two wounds. Yeah, we killed another one. Another storm shield. Oh dear. He's and then eyes. the second one here. So two pulse lasers, three roll ones, thank goodness. One hit, one wound. Oh. That's another storm shield. What's happened to them? They're losing faith in the storm shields. And star cannons. Oh, ho, ho. thank God for three roll ones. And freeze. Ooh, just the one now. No, All I need. no, another one. <laughs> That's two more, Dad. Two more, so down to two. And the last one, same target. Pulse laser. Wounds. Come on, storm shields. Yay! They're back on again. And star cannons. Oh, no. Oh, no. It is a wound. It's good. Okay, so we have two left. Phase, what are you going to do first? The troop master here is going to go into here. Yep. Now he's got the star mist raiment, so he cannot be overwatched. Okay. So he's, he's in comfortably. That's good. And you're just going to wrap the rest of them round, aren't you? Yep. It's going good. to wrap the other squad round here onto this objective. Good. And over here, what, what distance do you need? I need five to get into the uh, Eversort behind the wall. Yep. So let's see if this guy goes in. And I get a I see seven. a five and one dice already. Okay. So they're going to charge in as well. Yep. Interesting. So Simon has um, elected to do the um, the attacks on the Eversaw first. Unfortunately, I didn't get to overwatch with the Eversaw because he has charged from out of line of sight. And that's a cheeky little way of getting around overwatch. Okay, Simon, hit me with it. How many shots have you got? Or hits have you got? Uh, so they have four attacks each. So yep. 20 attacks. These are all uh, Harlequin's Kisses. So they do... Minus one AP, D3 damage each. Okay, my Eversaur is going to put his Feel No Pain strat on. That one CP. That is one CP. Nice. Okay, so we're hitting on Freeze. Not bad. And we're wounding on Fours. That is... Not bad at all. Okay. Nine wounds, I believe, there. Nine wounds. Not a problem, sir. Uh-oh. Uh, that is four. So four D3 damage. Roll a bunch of ones, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight wounds all together. Um, is it four ups for these as well? Four ups, feel no pains. <laughs> You've taken voids. Yep, so I still can't kill him. <laughs> I did tell you, I did say that uh, 20 Harlequin attacks won't kill him. That 4 up feel no pain strat is amazing. Oh, do I get my command point back? No! And do I get a command point back? No. Uh, you're rolling far too high for any. Far too high for yeah. what I need. Okay, um, should we get over to the big fight? Yes. Oh, there's not many Death Watch left here. Okay, who are you going with first? We're going to do the Troop Master here. The guy with the glowing green sword. Yeah, he's going to use his Harlequin's Kiss. Yep. Uh, so he's hitting on uh, twos. Okay. And he's wounding on fours, but he rerolls to wound. That's two wounds at AP minus one, but they're storm shields. They're always storm shields, and they're always awesome. Gonna make you work for this one. You are. Who's next? Uh, do the squad on his right one. His right, so we're two, talking about the blue squad. Three. Four, five. Yep, the blue squad there. So who are they going to attack into? The Death Watch squad. They're all into Death Watch as well. Yeah. So these guys have got Harlequin's caresses. So strength five. Okay. I'm going to pretend I know the difference. 
So we're hitting off freeze. That's pretty good. One. That's oh, yeah. very good. And I'm Ooh. wounding on wounding on freeze and re-rolling because of the troop master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AP. Uh, AP minus. AP minus, you've got Storm Shield, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> AP minus two, damage one. I'm oh, sorry, that. I can't just... hold all these wounds. Uh, they're dead. Yay! <laughs> it only took <laughs> a troop master and 20 Harlequins, oh, sorry, 10 Harlequins to kill a 10 man Death Watch squad. <laughs> no, and, and, th and three air. And three, three aeroplanes and an entire round of shooting and all the transports. Yes. So this is turning into a really interesting game, actually. Um, my plan here is that if I can kill Simon's death, if I can kill Simon's squads uh, of troops, then actually he loses his ground presence, and at that point I can start racking up the points on him. Um, I don't think he's got enough left to completely table me. So um, I think the Eversaw can take care of himself, or he explodes and everyone dies. Anyway, um, Simon's done a really good job of actually keeping me out of rapid fire range of those troops. Though hopefully the Dreadnought can do some work. He's got a, um, a low strength, um, high volume of shots uh, mode with his cannon. So I'm gonna, hopefully going to use that. I'm going to use the, the other Death Watch squad at long range to try and finish off a couple of units as well. Um, let's see what happens. But hopefully I can get his scoring potential down this turn. Because I think that's the key to this. Okay, so movement phase. Um, what I've done is you have zoned all this area out like you, you intended to do, which is really good, but I've dropped this unit back here because I think this is where we're actually going to win the game is by controlling these two objectives here. So I've dropped Death Watch squad here. They're still within 24 inches of these guys. Um, and I've got a couple in range of this one as well. So hopefully I can kill this one squad here. My Telemon Dreadnought um, over here. Telemon Dreadnought over here is in range of this squad. Um, he's got a low, um, low, lower strength, um, high volume of shots, so he's got 12 shots, which can hopefully go in here as well. This Death Watch squad here, <laughs> they're not really going to be able to do much, but this, this has only got three wounds left on it. Um, so they're within 30 inches of this one here, so hopefully they can shoot that to death. I have my three remaining guardsmen! Still sitting on that objective. And I have my other guardsmen on this objective. Um, and my Eversaw is still in. My Eversaw is still in combat over here. Um, so let's see what happens there. Okay, let's get on with things then. Okay, so we've got the Telemon here. It's going to go across into this squad here. Uh, it's got 12 shots. Um, you're minus one to wound, aren't you? I am minus one to wound, yes. From the Shadow Seer. So, not minus one to hit though. So I reroll once because Shield Captain's still there. He's still a boss. Uh, so that's 10 hits. And on threes. Okay, so that is two, four, six, seven wounds. Seven wounds, not bad. Uh, four plus invulnerable saves. Oh, I one. Good. One guy dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so I'm going to use um, the Kraken rounds for the extra range, and I'm going to shoot into uh, this little transport over here. All right. Um, okay, so. Let's do this. Full re-rolls to hit, and you're minus one to hit, aren't you? I am minus one to hit. Okay. Pretty good. On fives. Uh, that's not bad. It's not bad. Six. Six wounds, buddy. Um, these are four in vulnerable saves. No, it is dead. That's it, there's no point rolling for an explosion. Nope. Okay, so 13 shots are going to go into this guy here on Hellfire. Let's see what we can do. On twos. That's a bunch of wounds for you, buddy. Let's see. Death Jester. Takes two free wounds, he's dead. Yeah. Uh, do I spend a reroll to try and save him? I'm actually going to spend my last reroll to try and save him because if I save him, he's going to still be on his objective for another turn. So I spend one CP. Oh no, unfortunately not. And no CP left. Okay. And um, I'm going to shoot the 10 shots into the other guy. Six. Uh, okay, so I wound you on twos, but I'm minus one to wound. Minus one to wound because of the shows here. Uh, so that is four wins. Uh, 
four ups from this one. And two die from that squad. Okay, so assaults, I'm going to try and uh, jump over here. I need a 10 inch. No, that's not 10. Uh, so I'm just going to be attacking with my Eversaw. So that is six attacks with my Eversaw. That is six hits. Uh, with a claw, as always. That is six wounds. Yeah, I don't think the uh, the squad is going to survive this, unfortunately. We'll give it a good go. Oh, one left. There's one guy left. So I'll do my attacks back. Four attacks, hitting on threes. And fours. One wound. He's good. Uh, I think that's the end of the combat phase. Yep. So, end of turn three. It's an amazingly close game. We have, um, we have 15 points all after that. Um, I think it's really close, actually. You've got this kind of... You've got the centre of the board. I've got the edges of the board. It's really close. Yeah, this has been one of our closer games we've had so far. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really good. OK, so going into turn four, my objectives here are just to try and get as many objectives as I can. I don't have very much in terms of troops left. So what troop I do have really need to be doing their job by sitting on objectives, getting objectives secured, and getting me as many points as I can now going into the late game. Andy's Death Watch are way tougher than mine and much, much more difficult to kill and remove from objectives. Objective scoring now in this late game is super important, so that is my aim going into this next turn. So here we have it. The Harlequins have been shifting around the board. Simon! What's going on? Walk me through it. Okay. So the idea now is just to try and get as many objectives as we can. So troops have gathered around here with the troop master and the death jester onto this objective in the middle here. Are they hiding? Of course they are. Hiding from my giant golden robot over here. The, What's next? Uh, troop and the uh, warlord Shadow Sea have moved on to this back objective now to claim this one. Well, you say you say these guys have. They they rolled a one on their advance, didn't they? They they may have done yes. Yeah. We should, okay. Interesting. But at least you've protected your um, your Shadow Seer actually with a plane here. So yeah. So the planes come back around to just sort of yeah. screen off a little bit from the uh, Death Watch. Um, the other plane has gone to move towards the Eversaw, <laughs> and the Harlequin that was still in combat with him has disengaged. Okay. And then the two Star Weavers have each moved on to objectives, hopefully to clear off the Guardsmen and claim that one. Okay, so this could be a big scoring turn for you. It could be. Hopefully it goes well and I can score some objectives going Well, you know, I don't actually share that sentiment, but, you know. I'll keep I that in mind goes... when I'm shooting you off the board. I, I hope it goes horribly. <laughs> and I'm sure it will. <laughs> All right, let's get in with your psychic phase, buddy. What are you going to do? Cool. I'm um, going to start with uh, Mirror of Minds again. Well, second time lucky. So we're going to fire this at the Death Watch squad here. It'll never work. No. Go on. So it's manifest on a 10. Okay. And uh, we both roll off. I'm going to let you roll first this time. Oh, no. So a mortal wound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Keep so going. that's one mortal wound. Ooh. Three. Oh, you... Two more wounds. wounds. Yeah. Oh, you don't. No, you can beat that. No, three mortal wounds. <laughs> it's because I made fun of this power. I'll just stop it. Four mortal wounds. Yeah. Yay! Four mortal wounds. That's four dead death watch. That's pretty good. Just, just, just don't. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remove them. Cool. And then we'll smite them as well. And a big nice spite spy, uh, smiter roll will be nice. Six goes off. D3. And another one. So five death watch. Okay. That was a ridiculous psychic phase. Let's just forget that happened. <laughs> I'm pleased with that. That went well. Yeah, okay. <laughs> What's next? Uh, continuing with the theme of mortal wounds, let's try the uh, never Phantasm work. Grenade Launcher. No. So hits on twos. And your leadership. Nine. Nine still, because the guy's yeah. still there. Oh no, that's no, a that's a that's a no from ever that. Worked. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. So we'll do this Crimson Hunter then into the Death Watch squad as well. Okay. So this is the Pulse Laser, and they both hit, and uh, only one wound. Excellent, another Death Watch. 
And then the start cannons. And we're going freeze. That's another two wounds and start cannons. It's good. Okay. We'll do the Crimson Hunter into the Eversaur Assassin. So Andy did claim at the beginning of the phase that he's using his um, feel no pain and horrible shenanigans. Oh yeah. So we'll do the... Yeah, take a bit of shifting, these Eversaurs. Yeah. Pulse laser first. Your ones. And one wound. Okay, four up. Saved. And the star cannons. Uh, the all hit. I'm not worried. A wind. A wind. Need a good roll here. Oh no! Ooh, these are D three each. Okay, so six wounds. Oh, he's oh, dead. He's dead. Um, okay, just D three more wounds. <laughs> Two more wounds, buddy. <laughs> Remove your side of the objective scoring as well. <laughs> Uh, Everyone loves an Eversaur. No, nobody likes Eversaurs. <laughs> Bloody stupid Eversaurs. Right, okay, well, he's dead. No objection to you either. He's really mean off camera. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a hero. Absolute hero. Okay, so this guy. We'll do the Star Weavers first, I think. Yep. So, first one is going into the Guardsman over there. He advanced, yeah. He advanced, but he doesn't suffer any penalties because okay. he is a sword of spite. Into Guardsman, yeah? Into the Guardsman. Twos. Ooh, well, loads to a dead Guardsman. Because they're OP minus three. And then three saves on the remaining Guardsman. Okay. Nope, they're dead. Okay, cool. That's some dead Guardsman. That is some dead Guardsman. The Glass Crimson Hunter is going to go into a Death Watch right in front. So pulse laser. Uh, one hit. And one wound. And a failed storm shield save. No, you jinxed it! <laughs> oh no, it's got to be on the Terminator because he's wounded. Oh, he does, yeah, so he's dead. Yeah, he is dead. Uh, and then the Stark Hands. All hit. And all wound. All saved. Oh, of course, because of storm shields. Yes. Infinitely better than Terminator saves. Cool. And I think that is the end of my shooting phase. Oh, end of the turn. Simon, I believe you're on four objectives, aren't you? So I am, so four You're not objectives. over there, because the Eversaw exploded. You're on here, you're on here, and you're on here, and here. So your transports are really doing work for you, aren't they? They are. The and speed's really been helping me in this game. Skilled, killed two? Yep, killed the guard and killed the Eversaw. The Eversaw, unfortunately, killed all of mine. <laughs> uh, puts me on six points for this turn, so pretty pleased with that. And I'm on one. So let's see if I can pull this back. Okay, this is this is still a really really close game. Um, basically, I just need to keep working away at Simon's scoring unit because he's got those three planes. Um, honestly, they don't have that much to do, so it's really just trying to kill his troops. And if I can kill his Star Weavers, I can kill his troops. Then um, he's got no way of scoring points. I mean, he's had a few big turns of scoring, so I've really got to shut that down. Okay, so where's stuff moved to this turn, Andy? The dreadnought's moved. It's moved at least an inch. It has moved from behind its cover, so it's moved probably at least four inches. No, I won't go that crazy. So you can see this wingtip here, so I'm going to try and shoot this this uh, Star Weaver. My Death Watch is hovering around this one here. My guards move forwards here. Um, and I've got the conga line of Death Watch still sitting there. Just eyeing up these guys. Let's see what happens, eh? Yeah. Let's see what happens. Um, so first off... Um, I'm going to do a little bit of shooting with um, the Telamon to start with. I am going to put all of its shots into that Star Weaver there. And I'm going to put its, um, its bolt launcher into the other Star Weaver. Okay. Four shots with the big gun, four hits, and I wound you on twos. Ooh, that's only three wounds. Okay, these are damage three. They are damage three. So I need to save at least two of these. Which I do, do not. not. So, so that is one blown up transport. So that is dead over there, so I'll remove that in a moment. Um, so then it is my five shots into this one here. Um, that's three hits. That's two wounds. Are you tough as five? I'm tough as five. Two wounds. And one goes through. Okay, so you're down to five. Five wounds left on that one. 
Uh, next, I'll do my Death Watch Captain. He's going to shoot into that. He's going to shoot into that transport. That's two hits. Uh, that mm, is nothing. Nothing. Okay, so next up, I'll do my Shield Captain into him. One shot with his magic staff. Oh, that's a wound. Two damage. This one. No, oh, it's not. <laughs> it's no damage. No, it's not no damage. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a lot of Death Watch shooting into this. Okay, we'll come back in a moment to see how many wounds he does to the Star Weaver. Yeah, Andy, how many wounds did you manage to do to this with all of that Death Watch? There we go. There they are for you. Excellent. <laughs> and you say uh, so them both, <laughs> so uh, good job, Death Watch, I guess. Yeah, the real all-stars, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so four of them can see these uh, the streaks what hit, so that's what they're going to do. They're just going to start shooting. What rounds are these ones, Andy? Uh, these are the extra range rounds. Oh, cool. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to wound you on fours because you're minus one to wound. Uh, so that is four wounds. All right. The five wounds, is that? Four wounds. Four wounds. Is that? Move that one out the way. Come on, girls. Let's see what we got. Yes! Squad oh, dead! Kills all squad. No more CP left to save them. They are gone. I needed that. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> And one guy can see these guys, so that's what they're going to shoot. That's two hits. That's a wound. Ooh. Ooh, no, it takes a wound. That's one dead Harlequin. Take the one here. Lovely. Okay, buddy, so Death Watch are going to charge in. Company Master is going to charge in as well. No worries. In which case, I will overwatch the Death Watch squad then if they're the ones charging first. Yeah, they I are very much charging in first. Cool. So, two Shuriken Cannons. Doing not very much. Okay, they get in. Oh, this one. Other oh, guys get in. So first of all, so basically what I've done is I've tried to go round as far as I can that way because I need more objectives next turn. So um, first of all, I'm going to do my Watchmaster. Uh, Rerolls misses. So and then I'm strength five. You're strength four. So I need fours. So that is two. Let's see what I can do. Uh, one gets three damage. Three damage. Which I think takes it down to two wounds left. Yep. Okay, and for the Death Watch now. Okay, so 12 more guys. Uh, we roll one, twos, and threes. We'll probably. Uh -huh. This could probably do it. And then on fives. Then on fives. Oh dear, that one. one. <gasps> He's good. Terminator. Nothing for the uh, Terminator. Reroll for the deed. Oh, yeah, correct. Just a one. one. What? <laughs> it, is like, it is. It is still alive, being annoying. Oh, ever so annoying. Okay. Okay. Uh, I actually get to attack back with this guy. Uh, so I actually hit him on freeze because I actually had a crew on this guy. Uh, one hit, but no wounds, and that is that combat resolved. I failed to kill this completely, so this, that's really annoying. So um, that's, that's cost me a couple of points there, because you're going to get an extra uh, objective with the next turn. Hopefully. Um, so I scored five points in that, and I scored one point in your turn, so it's uh, 21 all. Yeah, 21, 21 all, all going into turn five, potentially the last turn. Yeah. Okay, so potentially last turn. I do have some units left on the board now. However, my flyers do have very little in terms of nice, big, juicy targets now. I think at this point in the game, it's probably not worth dealing with the Telemon. So I think now I'm just going to use my flyers to just go and deal with the remaining Death Watch squads, thin them down, and hopefully give him less stuff to move on to objectives later on. My movement phase now is just going to be moving on to all of the bare objectives that have not got models on, keeping hold of them and try and get a big enough score now going into this potentially final turn. And you're hoping for a big psychic phase, are you? I could really do it like that psychic phase like we did earlier. Okay, let me quickly walk you through your movement phase. So okay. what have you done? So the Crimson Hunter from the middle has now moved down to the end to try and get a little bit of line of sight on the Death Watch squad yep. that's been hurt at the end. The um, Star Weaver that you failed to kill has yeah. moved back onto the um, spare objective here to go and claim that one for me. So that was a two-point swing there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Really good we didn't kill that. The... Squad and the Death Jester and the Troop Master are still going to stay just alive. Just hide out there, yeah. yeah. claim that. Just try and keep that objective there nice and safe. The Shadow Seer has just scurried backwards a little bit, and the planes have kind of swapped sides. So what I've done with this Crimson Hunter here is actually moved it onto the objective. 
yeah, just I to saw try. That. And, that was quite cheeky. Just so to I can't, and, yeah, yeah, so I can't um, grab both objectives again. Yes, so I don't think I've got quite enough guys to do that anymore. Not quite, but it makes this objective now much much harder for you to score because obviously you can't go with when one inch of the base. Yeah, and because I'm on the objective now. Who said move, flying move blocking was dead? Okay, let's get into your psychic phase. Okay. You need to do a lot of mortal wound here. I do. I could do a passing some psychic tests. So I think we're going to do the opposite round now. I'm going to ask for a big smite, I think. So big smite first. Six goes off. D3 mortal wounds. Oh, one. one mortal wound. Okay, I'll pull one in a second. Cool. And the second one is going to be Mirror of Minds. Oh, that damn spell. Never works, right? Uh, I think, you know what, I think that's actually failed. I'll just double check that and be right back with you. Okay, so that is a failed psychic test for the Mirror Minds. It is, unfortunately, it is a cast on a 7, not a 5. Well, that's maybe a shooting phase will make up for it. Hopefully. Okay, where are you going first? I think we're going to go with the uh, Phantasm Grenade Launcher. <laughs> it's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. Okay, here we go. So, hits on twos. Yep. And your guy's still there being leash of 9. So. Yep. Nope. No. <laughs> so next up we have this Star Weaver. I'm going to really regret leaving this thing alive. Hopefully. I did try, to be fair. It's and he's going to go into the Death Watch squad as well. Yeah, into the Death Watch. So, Shuriken Cannons. Hitting on threes. Oh, dear. They're not threes, buddy. No, winning on threes. That's a fluffing. That is a fluffing. I okay. think my dice have finally abandoned me now at the end of the game. Yeah. So we'll do then the Crimson Hunters. So we'll do this one first, but I can still see stuff. And I think you can just see the one guy at the, the end. end. So pulse laser. Uh, hits both times. What wounds once. Here's a save. And star cannons. Moving on freeze. Two wounds and star cannons. It's the same. Oh, these storm shields. <laughs> Everyone one. loves Death Watch. Same thing. Pulse lasers. Really ones. Ooh. Nothing from them. Oh. Star cannons. One. Uh, one from the star cannons. Oh, Ooh, one goes through. One. Okay. And then the last plane, pulse laser. One. Two wounds. Oh, two wounds. Yep. Oh, oh so that's three dead. That's three. And the star cannons. Then again, would have been lovely. That's not bad. Ones and twos, please, Andy. That'd be wonderful. Oh, oh. one's left. One's left. Um, I'll pull the jump pack. Okay, so let's do my leadership. They have lost six there. I have no Terminator. So let's see what I roll. <gasps> uh, Astarte Zoe gets to re roll it. There's a one! There's a one! Is that a fail? Still a pass? That's a very big pass. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm never, never lucky. There, never so lucky. you're on one point there. Yep. Uh, nothing there. And two points. And three points here. So you scored three. You didn't kill anything. I did not kill anything, unfortunately I needed that one guy to go. Okay. So actually, that again, that's going to be a two-point swing, isn't it? Because I'm going to get that objective back. You, I think, might win now because you only need three. You'll be on three objectives this yeah, turn. So all you need to do is kill the Star Weaver with two wounds and you win. What I failed to do last turn. This is potentially my last turn. Um, we're pretty much neck and neck with points, but actually I think with Simon failing to kill that last Death Watch, or him failing to run away in fact, because that was that was seriously close. I think with that, I may just have pulled this back. I need to get at least three points in this turn. Um, so basically if I stand on three objectives and kill a Star Weaver or charge it and get onto the fourth objective, um, then I'm ahead slightly ahead. Hey, okay, so this is turn five, potentially the last turn here. So my lone Death Watch man, how do you find, feel about that, Simon? He's hiding here now. I'm so absolutely you, gutted I didn't kill him. So you actually haven't, this guy's gonna fly off next turn and uh, potentially, potentially you can use this plane, but you have to commit a whole plane to doing that um, if you want to get him off that objective. My other Death Watch have moved up here. They're just over an inch away from that Star Weaver. So even if I don't kill it, I can charge it and get your objective. Um, Telemond can see it. Um, and I'm on both objectives here. 
So I will score three points, potentially a fourth point, um, if I kill the Star Weaver. Even if I don't kill the Star Weaver, then I'm on it as well. Okay. So I think, first of all, should we shoot the Telemon at it? Yeah, I think we should, let's get this over with. Okay, that is one hit. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> one wind. And it's dead. Okay, so now that the Star Weaver is dead, I'm just outside of that objective, but I'm on three objectives. I picked up a kill point this turn. Um, so that puts me one point ahead of you, doesn't it? Yes. It does. Um, I've got my guardsmen here ready to claim objectives for next turn. Um, so I think that puts me in a pretty good position, actually. Uh, let's see if the game goes on. Oh, it is not. That is the narrowest of victories. Let's it do a is. quick post game. Ah, oh, so that was a close game, wasn't it? Yeah. Very, very close, this one. Now, one point in that, um, which was amazing. Uh, we thought going in, actually, that my arm was probably a little bit stronger. I think so. I think Harlequins are just quite weak at the moment, but Crimson Hunter's really, really good, so... Yeah. I thought you played the start really, really well. The way you trapped that uh, that unit of Guardsmen really put me on the back foot straight away. Yeah, I was really pleased with um, how that went. Um, I, I just got very unlucky with the, the captain who just... Demolish four he, he bikes He saved that game for, and he killed the fifth one when he died. Yeah, as well. he killed the fifth one when he died. Um, I think without that, that, that game would have gone south for me very, very quickly. Uh, which just goes to show, you know, if you do one thing wrong, if you pull the wrong model like I did in the combat, then yeah. Yeah, could turn a whole yeah, game around. You know, if someone, someone can easily use that against you. Um, I think the, from my side, I think the terrain actually on the table was a big factor in, you know, not bringing my firepower to bear. And I think um, if I had any other targets, I probably would have just shot your Skyweaver straight away because those planes, they just don't die. Yeah, they. Um, I've used them a few times now and that was by far probably their best performance they've done, so I'm really, really pleased. They lost a lot of their firepower late game when they just ran out of targets. Yeah, so... as soon as you're shooting Death Watch with three up Storm Shields, um, you're not doing that much, are you? No, unfortunately not. The Storm Shields are just... You know, they still kept it. They still killed a decent amount, but just not... Yeah, they, they, just, they, they, just have, they didn't have the volume of fire to really deal with with uh, Death Watch, unfortunately. No, but I, I still think it was the right call to try and shoot the Death Watch rather than go after that Telemon because you you ain't killing that. From from experience of playing knights, dealing with a toughness eight creature with a four plus and vulnerable save and a two plus save and a minus one to hit and a minus one to hit, it's just not worth it. Um, it's worth going after. Like I said, the Death Watch were the more important thing in this. Their objective secured. They're pretty quick if you use the um, the relic. Um, teleport Homer. Yeah, no, you killed that early on. And also being able to deep strike in, they're pretty mobile, so having to deal with them became my priority over the, the Telemon Dread. Yeah, I think I was right to hold that unit, that second unit in reserve for just a turn longer, just yeah, it absolutely. forced you to play a lot more conservatively. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, anyway, there you have it. Um, so, if you like the battle report, let us know. Um, obviously, um, let us know what you think about the tactics, because this is what this channel is all about. Now, if you want to see more tactics videos, uh, check out the link up here. And if you want to see our last battle report against Imperial Knights, which was awesome, check out the link down there. Um, and as always, guys, remember to subscribe to the channel if you like what you're seeing. Take care, guys.